lady. So good to see everybody this evening out here on a little cool night in Calvary. And uh, so we're going to start out with a song with number 493. And the name of the song is Revive Us Again, 493. Standards we sing. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now called above. Hallelujah, thank the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the Spirit of God, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our God. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb. Like you're too revived out there. Act like you revived on this last on this last verse. Revived. Can you hear it? Revived. Revived. Let's get revived. There we go. Revive us again. Fill its heart with thy love. May so be rekindled with our God above. Hallelujah. Prayer, please. Father God, thank you for this day and thank you for the many blessings you give us. Thank you, Carol Baptist Church, and what it means in this community and uh, around the region. We thank you for the people that you have sent our way. We thank you for that, the workers in it, and the youth, the children, the Father of the Lord, and the work driving around the world. Amen. You may be seated. I got another one. 450. I'll sing one more. Sing on the uh, the Lighthouse Children Home is going to be sponsoring this thing over at the Tala Thomasville Municipal Auditorium on the 23rd. So it's at 5:30. So uh, that'll be about three weeks down the road. But uh, they always do that. I think every year they have one over there. It's 
And it's supposed to be a really good saying. All right. Good to have you here tonight. Good to see each and every one of you as well. Um, I was uh, kind of uh, torn as to what to do tonight because uh, I was ready for the uh, Philippians study and I was like, well, you know what? We got two weeks and we got revival coming. And so it's time to get out the, the shovels and kind of turn up the, the heat a little bit on ourselves and that. But we've been in Philippians chapter 4 and the basic principle we've been talking about is putting off and putting on, right? You know, to put some things off of our lives and to put the right thoughts in and then focus on the truth. I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalm 27, verse 13. Psalm 27, verse 13. Psalm 27, verse 13. And uh, I need somebody to read that out loud. That's a list of rule off for us. It said, I have planted, thus I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We used to sing that for those uh, co workers that he had. I had fainted. Does somebody else have a different version that says something differently at all? A little bit? Verse, verse uh, 13. Okay. It's the same. It's good. I had, I had fainted, okay? You, you, you think about that. I would have lost heart when you faint. You lose heart, do you not? You know, what are some of the things that we've been talking about? We've been talking about, uh, you know, what we're focused on and rejoicing in the Lord and finding the peace of God in our, in our life. He said, I would have lost heart. Have you ever been to that point where you, you're just going to lose heart? You, you almost like, I've seen it in, in basketball teams. I've seen it in, in athletes. They just give up. They just give up. You know, it's just, it's, it's just too hard. It's just too hard. It, the, 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 it's just too difficult. It just seems like it's too... It's, it's, it's such a high mountain to climb, you know? And uh, you, you sit there and you think you, you look, would have lost heart. He would have lost heart unless he was confident that he would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When you sit there and you talk about that, when you think about that, it's like, man, that's just a dream. It's just a dream. But where's your faith? I was thinking, I was working on a, a message for, for Monday at a, a funeral and talking about Jesus being in their boat. You remember when the disciples pushed out and they went out, it was at night they're getting ready to go to eight miles across or whatever to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and a storm came up, you know, and, and they, they, the water's coming in and Jesus said, O oh, ye of little faith, where's your faith? You know, they, they were fainting, <laughs> right? They had lost heart. They were saying, save us, we're perishing. And Jesus spoke the word and it was calm. Yes, they were saved from their peril, but did they miss the object lesson that God is with us and Jesus is more powerful than anything? I had fainted. I would have lost heart. You know, when, when we try to change our thoughts on things. We, we, we think on good things. It's taking us from being fainting and looking at confidently at God in His Word. 
I want you to take your Bibles, turn to Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. In the book of Nehemiah, we're talking about, we're going to talk about revival on Sunday. You better come strap in your strap your, your belts on and uh, trim our toenails. <laughs> but uh, revival. You know, you think about reviving and what, is it, what does it mean to revive? It's to, to bring life back to it, right? I remember the young man that got hit on, on the four wheel right out here. Lex was the first one to him and I was right behind him. Lex turned around, headed back and I looked at the lifeless form laying on the ground, and he wasn't breathing. I thought he was dead. Until I kneeled down next to him, put my hand on his arm, and felt for a pulse. I want you to feel your pulse tonight. Go ahead, feel that. Do you feel that? Somebody walks up to you, you're not breathing, and they reach for that pulse. There's excitement. Amen? Amen. Reviving, putting the life back in. Nehemiah, I don't know if, you, if you've read some of the emails I sent on Monday and Tuesday. We've been in this passage here, and not really sure when the psalmist wrote Psalm 145, it could have been very well been when Daniel was in Babylon, but it kind of pictured a time when the children of Israel had been scattered all over. Why were they scattered? Why had they been driven and taken from their lands? Why was it taught to me? They quit worshiping the Lord. You know, you sit and you think about it. The children of Israel were in the promised land. They were there where it was milk and honey and all these wonderful blessings. And when do we realize that God's blessing has stopped flowing in our life? When do we realize that? You know, we have the Holy Spirit that lives within us, do we not? Amen? Amen. And He will never leave us or forsake us. But if, if He would leave our life, would we know it? I think we just take it for granted. That's exactly right. We take it for granted. We take Him for granted in our life. Nehemiah heard about Jerusalem and his heart was broken. And he, he, uh, he came and he, he came and he was in the, in the presence of the, the Artaxerxes. He was like, oh man, I'm, he's like 2,000 miles away. And he didn't stop there and think, what, what's somebody else going to do? He was thinking, what can I do? What can I do? You know, folks, we want revival in our country, do we not? We see that, all right? We, we want revival in our, in, our, in our state legislature. We want revival and, and a turning to God in the world around us. I mean, you, you, you think about all the, the anger, the hate, the, the uh, unkindness that's out there today. You see it all around us, do we not? 
We say, man, where is the teaching of God's word? Well, our nation needs revival, yes. But revival won't happen there until it starts in his people. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Let's just back a couple of chapters to your left. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says this If my people which are called by my name. I want to stop there. I know this is in the Old Testament, but Jesus Christ is the same way. Yesterday, today, and forever. Are we not called by God's name? We're Christians, right? We're believers. If my people, which are called by my name, shall what? Humble themselves. What does that mean? We have to, if we're going to humble ourselves, what do we have to put off? Our pride. We have to put off our pride. We have to start to change our thinking, do we not? Put off and put on. So humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. You know, what is revival? For the children of Israel, and when the judges were there, what was it? They, was, they would turn away and then they'd come back to the Lord, right? They start to put, they would stray. You see, revival is God's people getting serious about worshiping Him. Think about this. When God is number one in your life, is there anything that gets between you and God? Not at all. But today, our walk with God, our relationship with God is, is it first? Is it second? Is it optional? Do you catch it? When we get serious about worshiping God, when we get serious about following Jesus, obeying the scriptures, making him known, when we get serious, hey, listen, serious about applying his, his truths to our own heart, that's when change starts to happen. There's the old illustration. If you want revival, don't look at somebody else's life. Draw a circle and step into it and say, Lord, what do I need to change in my life? What do I need to put off and put in its place? The children of Israel were driven because God's anger was, was, was focused. They sent people to, to persecute them. You know, there's lots of different Words in scripture, worship, repentance, obedience, holiness that, re, that are associated with revival. And when we start worshiping God, when we start to repent, when we start to obey, when we start to look at God and his holiness, things are going to start to change in our lives. Revival is worshiping God above all. That's what it is. It's putting God back in his rightful place in our life. Sit and think about this. Who's more important in your life than God? You know, when you're sitting in college and you're sitting in high school and that, and you're thinking about this, well, you know, we can do that, yes. And then you get married or you've got some special people in your life, you've got kids in your life, you think, well, where does God fit? Where ought she be? Where, where, ought, where should he be in our life? 
he shouldn't have changed. He should be first. God's word says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye what? First. first the kingdom of God and his rights, and all these things shall be added unto you. I think one of the hardest things to, for me to learn as a little kid, and uh, my dad did this at, at Christmas time, you know, we weren't. Our, our family wasn't. Yeah, have you ever eaten eggs and noodles together? You've eaten grits? But man, I'll tell you what, eggs and butter noodles together, that was the best stuff to eat ever. And that's what we ate for supper a lot of times, okay? Uh, Y'all looking at me like cross-eyed. Try it sometime. You say, man, it's good. All right, listen. Scrambled eggs and noodles together, yeah? I don't, it was best stuff. Of, I could eat it all the time as a kid, you know. Um, we got some money for Christmas. I don't know who from, but I, we got $10, and I was all in single-dollar bills. You know, so, you know, my sister, myself, my brother, Randy, we got this money. Oh, this is great. You know, we're running through the J.C. Penny catalog and figuring out what we can get. You, you know what that is. You're thinking all those different things. And then my dad started to teach us about tithing. <laughs> Susan, yeah, yeah. Right away, right away. Yes, he goes, well, you know you gotta give 10% of that to God. Oh my word. <laughs> that was not easy to do. That was not easy to do at all. I think it was done with tears and crying. What? You know, the valuable lesson, I never forgot about that. But folks, listen, where's God fit into our life? Revival means worshiping God above all. Revival means walking in repentance. What does that mean? Changing things in our life that need to be changed. God, what needs to change in my life? You know, we, we're very good at asking things and, and hiding things. But we need to get into God's Word, do we not? We need to get into God's Word, read it, and apply it. James talks about that, does he not? James talks about, you know, it, it, this is Cronin version now. You go to God's Word and you look into the, the perfect law of liberty, okay? You look into the mirror of God's Word. And what person's going to look at God's word, look at his face and say, man, you got egg all over your face and say, well, I'm just going to go out and do my thing. I don't mind. If I had egg on my face, I would do what? Wash it off. If you had a milk mustache, you'd wash it off. You'd clean it off. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. We get into God's word so that we can look at ourselves and become more like Christ. Honestly, we shouldn't have to wait for a time of revival in our life to focus on the truths in God's Word. How many of you go through spring cleaning? How many of you do that? You don't, okay? Just avoid it. Time to go fishing. All right. But even Lex, don't you clean out your fishing boxes? Yes, I do. Once in a while? Okay, good. All right. It's putting into practice what God's Word has for us. It's, it's living in obedience. It's living in obedience to God. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 says, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Send that person. They're available. No. It says what? Here am I. Send me. You know, Nehemiah, he didn't sit there and say, hey, uh, somebody else can do the job. You know, maybe somebody else will do this. He said, I'm willing. Folks, that's where revival. Now, you, you think about Nehemiah. And what happened because of his tender heart to the moving of God in his life. A wall was built. 
People were given protection. There was vision. There was excitement. There was all because one person was touched by God in their life. It's living in obedience. Are we living in obedience to God? It's, it's revival is desiring God's holiness. It's looking at God's holiness. I still think of that of the, the gentleman that, you know, the cart was being moved by David on a brand new cart, not following God's instructions. And uh, wasn't it, was it Uzziah? Uzziah? I think it was. The cart hit a bump and shook and the, the Ark of the Covenant moved a little bit and he put his hand up there to keep it steady. And what happened to him? Instantaneously dead. Why? Because we serve a holy God. A holy God. I've had, I've had people say to me, well, you know, I think God's going to be okay with my and they fill in the blank. Why do they think that way? Because in their mind, they've made an image of God that God's okay with this. And God turned his back on his son because of what? Because he bore our sin and our grief. He bore those. He's holy. This is the putting off and the putting on process in our life. God is holy. He's holy. He's mighty. And when we step into His presence, we're going to fall prostrate at His feet because of His holiness. I want you to look at one more passage. And this is what we'll stop with. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. And I want you to think of this verse as the God of the universe asking God who knows all, who's perfect in justice and judgment, who's gracious and loving and kind, and asking Him, search me, O God, and what? Yeah. Know my heart. Try me. And what? Yeah. Know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. That's a prayer coming from a humble heart. Someone that understands that they're not perfect, that they struggle, but they are willing to change. They've drawn the circle and they've stepped in and they bowed their knee and said, Lord, show me what I need to change. That's when revival starts. That's when there's a change. Then when you, when you feel like you, everything's cleaned and, and just... You're moving in step with God. His word says he will never leave us and he'll never forsake us. But what does he want from us? He wants our devotion. He wants us to put him first and he wants us to strive to be like him. That means putting off and putting on. That means a f a focusing on scripture and, and claiming and claiming the promises in his word. I am so thankful for God's grace. Amen? If it wasn't for God's grace, we would have been sapped already. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. 
that saved a wretch like I am so thankful that I can come and pour my heart out to God. Tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit more about revival. And I want us to spend some time in prayer. The first part of our, our prayer, I want you to pray by yourself. And maybe you pray the prayer. Search me, O God, know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts. What do, what do I need to leave at your altar, Father? What do I need to, to give to you? What do I need to do in the step of obedience? I guarantee you, the Lord's already put it on your heart. He's already put it there. And all we have to do is be obedient to him. So for the first point, first part here, I want us to just take some time and pray. And then after some time, I'm going to pray, and then we'll go into another session of prayer. Okay? So I just want you to pray at your seat. <clears throat> 